For me, post-apocalyptic, like I said in the opener, it's like it, it's this. It's a kind of a new genre, and it's very much, to, in my feeling, like a Western of the modern age. And what I mean by that is basically, it's like the you, when you see Western, you know the rules and you go with it. And um, you know, basically, it's like you're taking modern people and you're putting them in a situation without any rules and any laws, and you're just like trying to see how they how they treat each other. So and. I think, you know, obviously we have a lot of uh, anxiety about our, our future as a species. Um, um, you know, and, and, you know, if you, you, when you watch the news, it's sort of like pick, pick your extinction. You know, it's like, is it going to be, is it going to be a sickness? Is it going to be an asteroid? Is it going to be, you know, there's, there's so many things that we're, we're, uh, we have anxiety about that it's just a compelling genre and it's a fun genre to play with too. And so, um, but more specifically, we're from the South, and in the South, uh, over the last few years, when we go down to Georgia, we, we've noticed like a ton of abandoned homes and abandoned neighborhoods, and especially post-recession, like decay. And so I think over the last few years, going on, on trips down South, we've, we've sort of been thinking, hmm, you know, this is interesting. We have all these sets right here. Let's, uh, let's try and make a movie. You've worked from Bulwark Empire. Yeah. Any fans of Bulwark Empire? Yeah. So this must have been very different working on a guerrilla shoot film. How does this compare to like uh, working on a, I guess, more of a, a Hollywood type uh, t or a big, big budget TV series? Well, um, well, this was my first film, and it was a different experience because it just it seems different because when on Boardwalk Empire I had already done stuff before, and it seemed like it was easier, but then. When I was on this set, it was my first movie, so <laughs> it was just seemed different because I had never acted like this before, and it was different because it just it seemed like everyone. It was a smaller set, and it seemed like we were all together, and that's how I got to know people better. But on Boardwalk Empire, I didn't really get to know much, people as much. Right. In a lot of the scenarios um, in Georgia and the South, people have these huge properties. And there was a woman who had this, like, she owned these huge woods. And we'd done some kind of, I think Andrew made a commercial for her in exchange for letting us use them. And she had, like, abandoned barns, abandoned properties. And she was like, I don't care where you shoot, just do it at your own risk. So it was like we scouted and do you want to do it? Oh, yeah, there's, um, you know, Atlanta's like a, the film community is really blowing up. So uh, the, one of the crew members that we had working with us was a, uh, the, the, the guy who did the audio for it. This really sweet guy, he lives in like rural Georgia and they were like, hey, do you wanna go shoot in this house like that we know of? And we were like, yeah, definitely. Um, and so we went to this house and it was like, it was a house that this, this guy had died in um, like nine years ago. But no one had been in the house. Like the body wasn't there, but like no one had been in, and no one had changed anything. So like the first raid that the dad Jack goes in was a real house. It was filled with like the what was in the refrigerator was like had been there for nine years. All of his pictures. It was like it was like really going to the house, a uh, haunted house. So it was yeah, like things like that. Things like that you that you probably only get if you have no money and you're just like, what do you got? Like asking you know your friends and they're just like, well I know this place so. That was kind of how it worked. We have this great cinematographer, and um, his name is Sung Ray Cho. He's he's uh, he has he's worked on a lot of really big movies, but he was like an assistant camera. And from what I know about the industry, it's like you know once you find like your foot get your foothold in somewhere, it's kind of hard to to move up or move down, and you sort of have to make a name for yourself. So he was like he wanted to do a, he wanted to make a feature, and he was like. And he liked our story, and we, we got to become friends, and he liked our script. So he was like, yes, I will do this, and I will do this for very little money. Let's go do it. And so we had the benefit of a lot of his, all of his experience working. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, he's, he was fantastic. The idea was to find some really good people and try to, like, explore what it would really be like in that sort of a world. And... Um, as far as characters are concerned, you know, there's certain archetypes that I love. Like, I, I really love the heroic sort of Harrison Ford type of dad who's just, you know, he's trying to scrap together, you know, some sense of control the best he can. And, you know, up against 
all sorts of obstacles and 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 you know he's um, he's vulnerable you know I wanted to to really show that and um, and you know and and then with the outsider coming in you know there's there, I think exploring sort of like a maybe like a what comes to mind to me is like a Russell Crowe like I'm done killing you know I'm going down the street path now like that sort of a that sort of archetype also appeals to me you know because you know uh, just we're complicated as people, and how we react in situations that are in, that are tense, like I imagine the world ending <laughs> would be, um, is just it's a good it's a good space to sort of explore the way people would 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 be with each other, not just in like the sociopathic sense, but just in like the personal space of being together, finding a routine, trying to establish some sense of normalcy. We always say like if we had more money, we would have spent it, and it's amazing how far. Um, begging can take you and also like there's so many people like Andrew said earlier about Adam and so many people that are artists or that just truly love film and that want to be involved I think that was the biggest surprise that we encountered was people that were eager to help and um, in terms of budget like if we had had a lot of money we would have paid it and for us it was like we wanted to pay all the actors and of course everyone working on the film as much as we possibly could but also you know hope that they believed in the project as much as we did so yeah, we did trades like crazy. I mean, we were like, here's what we can do. Which, which of these things do you want? <laughs> like, Andrew can edit. He made some commercials. Like, the house we rented for the actors, uh, as we were begging this woman, she, you know, revealed to us that she had some wedding business she was starting up. And we were like, we can make you this amazing video for that. And she's like, ooh, okay. So, like, while we were in pre production, Andrew was editing a <laughs> wedding video. <laughs>